Adobe Generative Fill and Generative Expansion has some very serious problems when being used with high resolution images. In fact, it's almost, I hate to say it, but it's almost worthless with high resolution images. But I'm going to demonstrate that problem to you, but more importantly, I'm going to show you the workaround so that you can get excellent results using Generative Fill and Canvas Expansion with high resolution images. So let's see why I say that there's a problem with Adobe's Generative Expansion. The truth is that it's probably just fine if you're working with low resolution images, you know, on the order of about a thousand pixels on the long side. But there's a big problem with high resolution images. Let's check the resolution of this image, which uh, I actually took at Callaway Gardens in Georgia. We'll go to image, image size in pixels. And you can see that this is a high resolution image, about 8,400 pixels high and 5,800 pixels wide. Now, I'm going to show you the problem with the generative fill, and I'm also going to show you a very nice workaround that will lead to solving this problem and getting good results. But first, let's see what the problem is. So I'm going to go to the crop tool, and we're going to expand the canvas size. I'll just pick a random size. We'll pick it like this. And then we're going to come down here. We see there's Adobe's Generative Expand. And we're going to hit Generate. Generative Expand is working. Takes a few seconds. And there we go. And on first blush, it looks terrific. I mean, it's filled in. You know, if we turn off and see exactly what's filled in, it's continued these white trees. It's continued these green trees upwards, and it, it looks really nice. But let's go to high resolution here, and I'm going to go up to 100%. And you can see very clearly the division between the original photo on the right, which is sharp, and what generative expansion has filled in, which is very clearly not going to make a very good print. It's very blurry. Why is this? Well, it turns out that generative fill works at 1024 resolution, or rather, I should say, in 1024 block sizes. So it's taking what it's filling in at 1024 and then spreading it out across the entire area that needs to be filled in, which results in a resolution or a pixel density that is far less than the original picture. Now, again, it looks good. If you want to put this on the internet, you probably could, you know, or on social media. But if you wanted to print this, it's not going to come out very well. So what do we do? Let me delete this layer. And actually, let's go back in history to when we just opened the file. So how do we get around this problem? Let me show you the solution, which rests on the knowledge that generative fill works with those 1024 pixel blocks. First, let's expand the canvas by going to the crop tool. If it's not already up, you can just hit the letter C and that will bring up the crop tool. Now, in the toolbar, we're going to come over here and instead of having it fill with generative expand, we are going to switch it to transparent. Now, let's pull out the canvas. So I'm going to expand the canvas, but actually before I do that, I'm just going to decrease the size a little bit. So let's just pull out the canvas. It doesn't have to be to any specific size. It doesn't have to be even to uh, where we want it, because after we fill it, we can just crop away what we don't want or what we haven't filled. 
So now here's the trick. We're going to now go. Well, actually, before that trick, we click check to lock that in. And now we go to the marquee tool. And if we go to the marquee tool toolbar, we want to make sure under style that it is set to a fixed size. And that size is 1024 by 1024 pixels. Now, anytime we click, we're going to have a 1024 by 1024 pixel selection. So let's just click right here. And we can see that there's a 1024 by 1024 pixel marquee selection. And we're just going to move it here. And I'm going to allow for a little overlap. Whoop. There we go. And you'll see some people suggest that this has to be carefully calculated and the overlaps all have to be significant and you have to have a big grid. I think if you just, in my experience, if you just overlap it a bit, here we can increase it a little so we can see what we're doing. It actually can be even a little less overlapped. If you just overlap it as an approximate, I think you get very good results. So we're going to come to generative fill. And now we're going to generate a fill for our selection. Needless to say, it takes a few seconds here. And meanwhile, there's our fill. Now I'm going to click here, generate another box, line it up with a bit of overlap. Again, this doesn't have to be super exact. Generative fill, generate. Let Adobe Firefly do its thing. Let's click again. We're going to do generative fill, generate once more. Now, as you can see, it can take a good deal of time if you want to really expand the great deal. Let's try a little bit up here. And the key is going to come when I expand this to 100% so you can see how what we get now compares to what we had before. We click, little box, move it here, do our thing. And let's go to 100% and see what we're getting because you don't need to see me, you know, do this all around. It takes a few minutes. But let's go to 100% like we did before. Now, remember how lousy that was before? Look what it's doing here. Now, these background trees are far behind the, uh, the sharper tree. And actually, you can see that if we go to the background trees in the picture, they were all a little blurry and what was filled in is the same degree of depth of field. But if we come down here and we look at this tree here, it is exceedingly similar to what we've got going on just to the right of it. And here, this, this area here is a little sharper. I'm going to go down in size. And let's just do a, uh, a fill here and see how that works out for us. We'll overlap it a little, generate a fill, generate. Let's go up to 100%. And you can see that it is filling in with a sharpness that is consistent with the sharpness on the side that existed before the generative fill. So. This is the way around the problem. If you have an image that you want to expand, don't just expand it if you want to have sharpness all around. Use this technique. All you have to do is use the marquee tool after you expand the canvas.
go around, it takes a few minutes, fill 1024 by 1024 blocks with generative fill. When you're done, you can go right back to the crop tool. Let's make believe we did this all around. And of course, if we needed more, we could expand the canvas more and we could do another layer to the left of it. Uh, actually, let's do that just to show you. We'll go to the crop tool. We're going to add a little more here. We'll check. We'll go to the marquee tool. We'll click here. We'll expand this even further. We'll go up to 100%. And you can see it is continuing to expand quite well. So we can go out as far as we want. We can go back to the crop tool. We can decide we want to, you know, crop like this. And we can decide, you know, we want to fill in these areas. I'm not going to make you uh, watch. Actually, maybe I'll just fill it in and then come back and show you what the result was. So I did finish the expansion. And I should just mention that th this was not meant as a complete tutorial on how to use generative fill. I assume that you know a good deal about that if you're watching this type of video. But just so it's clear, just like when you expand the canvas, with each 1024 block selection, Generative Fill will give you three choices to choose from. I didn't scroll through them because I was quite happy with the first result that the Generative Fill gave for each 1024 by 1024 block. But you do have uh, the opportunity to scroll through and look at all three and choose the one that you want. Now, it took me, I don't know, two, three minutes to finish the expansion. came out quite excellent. We expanded the top, the side, and the bottom. You remember, remember that by the crop, we hadn't expanded the right side. So let's go up to 100%. We'll take a quick perusal. Here's the bottom. And you can see that what has been added is the appropriate sharpness for what surrounds it go up, we get to the grass that's sharp. And you can see that the sharpness in the grass here is the same sharpness as the grass there, essentially. Scroll up. We can see that things are filled in really rather well. I believe this was in the original image. We can take a look in a minute. And these are the trees that were filled in, and they're appropriately sharp, and certainly much, much better than just expanding that canvas, the kind of result that we got that I demonstrated in the beginning. So you can see it's really done quite an excellent job using this technique. Oh, I missed the crop here a little bit. That's not a big problem. When I put the block there, I didn't quite put it to the top. but you can see that using 1024 blocks will really give you quite a nice generative expansion. And expanding the canvas without using that technique is just fraught with problems, particularly if you're going to do a print. So here's the final image. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to go back on the original so you can see where we expanded. We went from this to this with a really nice result. I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. If so, I'd certainly appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel. This is the first video I've made in a bit of time, and there may be more coming. So uh, subscribe if you like what you see.